Newsflash, internet bikers cannot fix your motorcycle for you. Let's get into it. Revelator Alpha. Hello, welcome to Revelator Alpha. Hope you're all well. So this video is all about, uh, yes, us YouTubers, all bloggers out there uh, who uh, deal in uh, motorcycle content. And uh, yes, we may all make uh, videos explaining how to do a particular procedure or how to put something on your bike and or how to fix something and all that kind of stuff. Now, with that comes a lot of gratitude by some people, I'm sure, uh, who uh, really appreciate uh, what we and my colleagues in the YouTube world, let's say, uh, bring you or can offer you. But there's also possibly a little bit of resentment out there as well from, let's say, people who are professional mechanics, let's say, or from uh, dealerships who say, well, we might be stealing a bit of work from them as well. So I get all that. I get the, the pros and cons or the positivity against the negativity of YouTubers, you know, showing you how to do things as well, you know, with your motorcycle. Right. So I get all that. The flip side of this as well is that if you're always doing how-to videos, how to fix your bike, how to change your spark plugs, I don't know, how to strip your engine apart, uh, or if you specialize in a particular motorcycle, motorcycle brand or motorcycle uh, engine, whatever it is. Let's say I did a lot of content on Harley Davidson. When I first got my Harley Davidson Sport Glide, I produced a lot of content on technical aspects of that bike and how to fix little things and how to work things as well. Brand new bike, brand new model and all that kind of stuff. You get the deal. With that, uh, you get a lot of comments, of course, but you can also get a lot of inquiries from people who have just bought their bike and I still get them to this day and they want information or, or they want help with their particular product. Now, it could be that um, they're not getting that information from their dealership or they're not getting it from, uh, you know, a local mechanic or they don't really know anybody else who's got a Harley Davidson or a similar kind of bike. They see somebody like me on YouTube and they'll say, oh, okay, I'm going to ask this guy as well. Now, it could be that uh, lots of different reasons they're, they're asking me because uh, guess what? Um, they don't want to pay for somebody else to do it. They want to do it on the cheap. They want to do it by themselves. They just don't know how to do it, so they want a bit of advice. So anybody who emails into me uh, with a specific question, I do try and answer as, as many as I can. And sometimes it's a bit overwhelming. I get lots of emails uh, on a daily basis, as you can imagine. And a lot of it is, you know, some technical stuff. And, you know, whatever it is about a motorcycle in general or about the Harley Davidson's with the M8 engine in particular, um, then I can try and answer that as best as I can. But a lot of it is only on my own research or the experiences that I've had or what I've heard other people have to do with their bikes, so on and so forth. So I hope you can appreciate that with a YouTube channel or with a website, it's almost like a bit of a beacon uh, for people to send in information and their experiences, but also for people to want to extract information as well. That's all good. This is an all, all positive thing. And this is the reason why I did all, a lot of these videos as well. And I set up the website as well. So people could access information and we could all share ideas and information to help out our biking experience, let's say, with the Harley Davidson's with the M8 engine, right? Okay, so great. So sometimes, unfortunately, people uh, send in emails and uh, or they'll write a comment on a video almost demanding that... Uh, we as YouTubers, content creators, we give them the answer or, you know, or they'll hold us accountable or try and hold us accountable for something that we may have said or that we have done or, you know, something that isn't working on their bike and it's somehow, you know, we're the problem for not being able to fix it for them, you know. So let me just clarify a couple of things. So first of all, we cannot fix your bike for you. Physically, we're not with you. OK, so we can only go on a lot of times on what we're being told in an email or what the, let's say, symptoms are of the particular problem with your bike. But until we're actually there, we actually physically see it, we may not have an idea. We can give you suggestions of what you may want to check, but that's the limit of what we can do. And we can only tell you in a kind of broad sense to say, well, check this, check the electrics, check the battery, check your fuel, you know, you know, all these kinds of things, you know, but 
if it's not going to work, you, you know, we can't be blamed for not really fixing your bike because you're coming to us as an opinion, but you really need to go to, let's say, your mechanic your, or your dealership uh, to have somebody look at it properly. Now, of course, there's also uh, lots of times where we can help and we can give you uh, information and say, OK, try that and see how it works. One of the problems that I've certainly noticed, and, I, and I've highlighted this in the past, that many people will send in requests, you know, asking for help with their bike, whatever it is, or they've got a problem with it and they want to, to find out a solution or if I've heard of anything. So I can give you that, that information, but then I don't get any feedback back. I don't know if it's worked. I don't know if it's, it's helped at all. So again, somebody's taken the information from me or from the website or whatever, but they haven't fed back into it to see if any of this had, had worked. So if you've got a particular problem, let's say your bike isn't starting for whatever reason, or it isn't turning over, then it will be really helpful if you're taking information that you feed back as well to see exactly what the problem was in the end. Again, we can't fix your bike for you. You're going to have to get your bike fixed or you're going to have to fix it yourself. But hopefully the information that you've got from myself or from any other YouTuber out there or blogger has helped you out a little bit. Uh, and hopefully it saved you a little bit of money. But we can't keep on helping people if they don't feed back into the system as well. It's one of those things, you know, you've got to keep on giving us information and scenarios of what has worked on your bike, what hasn't happened, so we can help the next person or the next problem that you have based upon all the other feedback that we've got as well. We can say, actually, a few other people have experienced this you might want to try that so there's always this thing you know so i welcome people sending in emails and asking questions about their bike and how to fix it and so on and so forth but it is a little bit frustrating i've got to say when we're given information and we don't hear anything back or you know i'm not saying that you know people have to say thank you and all that sort of stuff of course it's nice to get all that um, but some kind of acknowledgement that you've received it but also some acknowledgement or some feedback of how it worked out now some people do they do do that and that's great but many people don't and that's the problem sometimes we'll give the information and it's not the information that you want to hear as well or it's exactly the same information that you got from a dealership or from a mechanic but maybe that is the correct information that you've already got from them and we as youtubers or myself in particular have said exactly the same thing because that is the right way to do it or that is the reason why you've got a problem uh, you may not want to hear it and it may end up costing you a lot of money to have this issue fixed but there's no way around it again we can't be held accountable or we can't be blamed for something that's gone on with your bike when you know we're not the cause of the problem now you know we also can't be accountable for anything that a dealership says or what the manufacturer does as well that's got nothing to do with us you know if something were to break on a, on a motorcycle or something's not working i've had a, quite a few emails where people have said this is not working on my bike why you know you tell me why this isn't working i said well i don't know <laughs> don't ask me go to the manufacturer go to the dealership it's got nothing to do with me you know so there's sometimes there's a bit of um there's a bit of animosity in the emails there's a bit of anger towards us as if you know we are the all-knowing uh the font of knowledge let's say and uh, we're supposed to just give that over you know without any you know goodwill or without any p's and q's you know so you know for my part on my website and you know any emails come in i always try and answer but so we can't fix your bike for you. We can only give you suggestions, but those suggestions come from the feedback that we get back in, or the stories or that we hear, or particular issues that we're made aware of. And when I say we, I'm talking about everybody who's involved in YouTube, let's say, who has got a website and you know does online Q and A's, that kind of thing. But you know, I'm talking about me in particular and what comes via the website as well. And so, you know, I I love to help wherever I can, and I could hopefully pass on that information to you as well. And a lot of videos that I used to make about the Sport Glide, about soft tails, about Taurus, and, and Harley Davidson specific content on the M8 engines, a lot of that was based upon 
emails that I was getting and experiences that other people were having and also fixes that they found or resolutions or problems that could not be fixed uh, by themselves you know this kind of thing so sometimes those emails are made into future videos as well so it's always worth you know sending in that kind of inquiry or that kind of information as well but anyway listen I, I thought I'd address that because I say sometimes it can be a bit frustrating for somebody like me who's trying to help trying to give give information or trying to give or share experiences but we just don't get feedback or you know there's almost like a bit of disappointment on the other end to say well you know we haven't been able to help you know and you know I'd love to help but sometimes I just can't do it you know there's no, there's nothing I can do I don't have all the answers so I can only go by experiences as well and you know if if I was charging you like a dealership you know four or five hundred pounds dollars shekels or whatever you know for my opinion that's one thing you you might have a bit of right to reply but to say everything you get is free you know so um say all I can do is try my best and uh, hopefully uh, you can add to that experience and share your experiences as well so that can be shared uh, a little bit uh, later on as well to anybody else who wants help as well but anyway, I thought I'd bring that to you unfortunately we can't fix your bike for you we can only offer suggestions and hopefully they work and if they don't then hopefully we can all learn a little bit more as well about uh, the next scenario that comes up hope you found that useful don't forget to subscribe hit that bell like and share check out the website revelatoralf.com where you can send in any question you like about anything motorcycle related okay ta-da